I'm going to put this stuff away later. Okay. Welcome to the 6th Annual Technology Showcase, presented by the City of Mount View and the Mount View Chamber of Commerce. I'm Javier Gonzalez, Google's Head of California Local Policy and Government Affairs. Google is proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Tech Showcase. It is my pleasure to welcome you today and also bring you greetings on behalf of Google's leadership and more than 100,000 Googlers from across the globe. In past years, the Tech Showcase has been an in-person event that takes place in the plaza outside of Mountain View City Hall. But due to the pandemic, this year's event is virtual and hopefully next year it will be an in-person event and perhaps involve a hybrid model that also includes a virtual component. The Tech Showcase is an exciting and awesome event that provides startups to medium and large companies, an opportunity to showcase cool, new, and innovative products and services that are being developed right here in Mountain View. And also an opportunity for the community to get to know more about the many, many enterprises that are located in the great city of Mountain View. There's a lot of excitement in store for you over the next two days. Event organizers have lined up several general sessions, such as a panel discussion on autonomous vehicles, how to leverage your online profile to help you get a job, how high school robotics are changing learning, and the latest in 3D printing. Attendings can also experience product demonstrations and live Q&A from companies showing their newest innovations, librarians giving tips about new tech tools and interactive workshops on preparing for a technical job interview and much more. In addition, there'll be fun and engaging activities in between sessions, such as a comedy break and a fitness break. Be sure to explore the platform has to offer. And thank you to the City of Mountain View staff and the Mountain View Chamber of Commerce staff for making this virtual event possible. Enjoy the sixth annual Tech Showcase. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Saba Hussein. I'm the program manager for R&D collaborations with USRA at NASA Ames Research Center. I would like to introduce our team of presenters from NASA's Ames Research Center. First, we have Karen Bradford, Director of Partnerships. She will be providing an overview of NASA, Ames Research Center, and the Partnerships Directorate. Followed by Rich Przarski, who, uh, who will be providing an overview of NASA's Small Business Innovative Research and Small Business Technology Transfer Program. And Christine Monroe, Small Business Specialist from the Small Business Office at Ames. And Jose Benavides, Research Engineer, will tell us about an exciting technology called Astrobee, which is a robotic teammate that works alongside astronauts on the International Space Station as they help to advance research. Time permitting, I will, uh, I will present how, to, uh, how industry and universities can engage through NASA Academic Mission Services Program on research and de development collaborations. We will take questions after the presentations at the 30 minute mark. With that, I'd like to introduce Ms. Karen Bradford and we will begin with a video of NASA partnerships. Thank you.
Okay, good afternoon. It's wonderful to see all of you. I'd love to make a comment about the video and say something like there's no sound in space. Why you did that's why you didn't hear that, but that's not really true. So I will say though that what we can probably do is provide you a link to the video so that you can now go back and listen to it on your own with sound, which would be fabulous. There's some I don't I don't know if it adds something to it or not, but you saw the real imaging behind what we do around strategic partnerships, which is a breadth of things at NASA. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what we do, particularly here at NASA Ames as well. So if you would advance the slide for me, Leslie. We started out as NACA. Again, that's not NACA. We love acronyms at NASA, but this is not one that we kind of smoosh together. It is the National Aeronautics Council on Aeronautics. And this started back in 1915. This was quite a long time ago. Next slide. And what you'll see is that eventually became NASA, right? Started out as NACA in 1915. Langley was the very first research center that NASA created with Ames closely following behind. And we started in 1939. That means we have over 80 years here in the Silicon Valley. I like to tell people and say, oh my gosh, isn't it great during Silicon Valley? Very proud to say that we seeded the valley, we seeded the Silicon Valley, and are continuing to do foundational research and technological research that helps it to thrive to this day. Next slide, please. There are several NASA centers. There are 10 locations that are located across the US, again, with Ames being located here in the Silicon Valley. As you can see, Glenn Research Center in Ohio, Goddard, which is out in Maryland, headquarters is in DC, Langley is in Virginia, Kennedy, of course, is in Florida, Marshall Space Flight Center is in Alabama, Stennis in Mississippi, JSC with Houston is in Texas. We've got the Armstrong Flight Research Center in Southern California, and of course, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, also down in Pasadena in Southern California. And then of course, us. Next slide, please. It's wonderful. As part of seeding the valley, NASA in Silicon Valley, we've been here for quite some time. This is Robert Norris, who's also known as the father in Silicon Valley. And he started Fairchild Semiconductor and also the founder of Intel, who we have been long-term partners with from the get-go. Next slide, please. This is just a really quick aerial look at NASA Ames Research Center. We've actually changed a bit since this slide was taken. If you'll notice at the top on the left, you have our wind tunnel, the largest in the world. And then at the bottom right, sustainability base, which until recently was our most recent new building that was constructed at the center. And we now have a new science and biological center that's there. It actually opened right before COVID. I actually haven't stepped foot in it. Looking forward to that when we get back on site. Next step, please. These are the core competencies that we have at Ames right now. I apologize for the slides when we did the transfer. It kind of went up ah, with the PowerPoint. But you can see here, these are our eight core competencies. Most of our centers have one or two at Ames. We're very much so proud of ourselves on eight. We've never been able to get lower than eight, and that's okay. Um, but some of the areas here you can read as well, the aerosciences, entry systems, advanced IT and computing, our intelligent adaptive systems, space and earth sciences, astrobiology and life sciences, IT management and control, and others. Next, please. We also are the home of some fabulous research facility that we do reimbursable agreements with for our commercial partners and others and our commercial space partners to work with us from wind tunnels, the Arc Deck Complex, Range Complex simulators, as well as advanced supercomputing. Our next slide, please. So in our area, strategic partnerships, there are three main areas in our location here at NASA Ames. We have our agreement side, which helps us with doing a Space Act agreements and other transactional authorities in order to be able to work with people in a variety of ways. We have our technology transfer department that also talks with you. We push that technology that's developed and thrives and patented at NASA in order to take it out to the public. And so that there's something that you get to do for real world application. And then also our SBIR 
our small business innovative and research department that you're going to hear a little bit more about in just a minute from my colleague rich brzarski but these are just some examples of partnerships and aims commercial virtual interagency, our NASA Ames Research Park, which thrives as far as some of the commercial space partners that are actually on site with us on the NASA campus and our international partners and academic as well. Next slide, please. One of the things that I love this, that Steve Jobs, right, the legendary Steve Jobs, actually was blown away when he came to Ames as a kid, right? He saw the computer terminal and he totally fell in love with it. I'd like to think that we also helped see that thought. And we know how far and just how impressive and how wonderful it was the work that Steve did with his company here in the Valley. That young inspiration, that next generation is a part of what strategic partnerships is about, right? It's taking that idea, starting from the very beginning, working with our partners in STEM education and other areas so that we can send that out into the world to you. Next slide. So that's just a really quick overview. If you ever have any other questions, you can always reach out to me. And I think we're actually gonna do questions at the end if I'm not uh, mistaken. So right now, what I want you to do, as I mentioned, this is going to be Rich Pizarski. He's gonna talk to you a little bit about our small business innovative research program that we have at NASA Ames. We have the level two program office, meaning that Ames is the um, center that runs this for the entire agency. And Rich is our lead for Ames. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I have a different uh, thing. Anyway, I'm from Ames, and um, I'm the, as uh, Karen said, the level three. It's called uh, Center Technology Transition Lead. We have one of these at every uh, one of the ten centers. Anyway, this is a 20-minute presentation that I will do in five minutes. So, <laughs> next slide, please. Okay. So, what's the mission of SBIRSTTR? Uh, the idea is, is that we want to leverage small business knowledge and technology development with small companies. Uh, we want to put them on the supply side of things and have technology develop. Uh, and again, you can read the details of that later. The vision is, again, we want small companies delivering new things that can help NASA, but also provide uh, benefits to society and grow the U.S. economy. Next slide, please. Okay, so the program, you know, uh, and every, uh, most, um, uh, there's 11 agencies that have this. So NASA to date has awarded more than $3.75 billion in contract to small businesses. And we have engineers and scientists from uh, more than 12, I'm sorry, more than 12,000 small businesses in all 50 states have worked on it. Next slide, please. Okay, so the way it works is that any um, a federal uh, institution or federal lab uh, that's got $100 million a year for extramural research, 3.2% by uh, congressional mandate uh, goes to uh, seeding some of these companies. Uh, the other one is uh, uh, one that works with uh, research institutes and small businesses, and currently is 0.45%. Next slide, please. All right, so what is this? In case you have, uh, didn't know about it. So the idea is we put out a, a solicitation uh, once a year, and uh, and we have different topics, subtopics that people can apply for. If you get one selected, the phase one uh, was one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, but it's been just up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. What that means is that you have six months to put together, not necessarily a prototype, but a study what can work. After you've done that, you can apply for a phase two. This is really the development, the prototype development and uh, $750,000 you get. I know these are small amounts at this point, but it allows you kind of to see how, the, um, uh, how your idea works. And there's a thing called phase three, and this is stuff that SBIR doesn't fund, but government agencies, Air Force, NASA, or even people outside of uh, the government can fund. And just quickly, uh, there's a phase two E, which allows you uh, to add some more money with matching funds. We have a bunch of these things called sequentials, 
Uh, and what they do is, again, add more money. Right now we have lunar sequentials, which are for our lunar program. And finally, there is a thing called CCRPP, uh, which is a program to develop technology, and that can be worth up to $3 million and develop the technology for commercial usage. Next slide, please. All right, people ask, what do we do? We've put everything, this is for all, the whole agency, not just Ames. Uh, Karen mentioned some of the stuff we do at Ames. They fit into this. Uh, this list is also available uh, if you go to sbir.nasa.gov, look at the solicitation, it'll have this. So we put things into focus areas like FA2, power, energy, and storage. That's everything from batteries working on Mars uh, to storing energy here on the Earth as an uh, offshoot and, and things like that. We have uh, ground and launch processing, uh, green aviation. So I'm not going to go through all this stuff. You can imagine what we have. We also have sensors, detectors, instruments. And for the people in the medical industries, we also do astronaut health and safety. And we've had a, quite a few successes at this point. Next slide, please. All right, I'm going to give you now some success stories that we've had. Uh, this is a high altitude, long endurance unmanned air vehicle. So what it, uh, uh, SBIR provided is for a configuration of this. This is made by a company called Swift Engineering, which actually began building sports cars, believe it or not. But the idea of this, it can stay locked for 30 days. And uh, this company got about $900,000 from the Forest Service. Because the beauty of this is you can fit instruments and have a monitor for us. As you all know, we're having problems with this. So this is going to get uh, more important. And also we use it for earth science stuff and atmospheric stuff. Next slide, please. This is an exciting one. It's called uh, Nature's Fine. NASA uh, originally and NSF funded grad students in Montana. And what they did is they found an extremophile. And the thermophile, they realized, can produce pro this one can produce protein for virtually anything. Uh, you, I was going to say stuff it down its throat. Obviously, it doesn't have a throat, but uh, it's suspended in. And uh, what NASA did is we said, hey, it could be a food source for space. So uh, it, uh, some of the funding kind of led to the creation of basically these masks that can be adhered to walls that can serve our astronauts. But even more uh, it, it, interesting is the Bill Gates Foundation has added money to it. VCs have added money to it. It's worth about $113 million in terms of external funding. And it's something for the future. So not all our stuff is space-based. We are working and helping things on the Earth also. And again, next slide. All right. And of course, space stuff. Um, as most of you probably have heard of CubeSat, these little things that go up, everyone wants to fly them from university students to uh, uh, companies uh, down the line. Now, usually the problem is to hitch a ride on another payload is they don't want these little guys because they have fuel. It could blow up. What this company did is uh, develop this thing called the hydro thrusters. And what they do is they run on water. So you could send it up with just water. No one's going to have a problem with it. And if you want to, if you're a fan of science fiction, well, I'll call it science fiction, but future stuff, you can eventually see our solar system with these, and they can fly around, find ice on comets, refuel themselves, and keep on going. But that's another whole story. The point is, uh, one is developing new technologies. Next slide, please. We also do air traffic control, national airspace. So we have companies coming in. We're, uh, we're uh, attaching autonomy. Uh, a mission, uh, rather machine learning and things like that to plot courses for airplanes, make things safer, and we all fly. And it's really complex type of things going on. Next one, please. And of course, I have to uh, crow about this. Perseverance with sitting on Mars. All the ones that are highlighted, all eight of these uh, uh, things actually came out of SBIRs. Uh, uh, we have this an uh, air squared on the lower left. It's part of this experiment called MOXIE, which they ran and are able to produce oxygen based on uh, carbon dioxide or um, converted from carbon dioxide for obviously fuel and oxygen. And it also has a future application. So instead of dragging a canister of oxygen from the hospital, you might grab one of these devices. Again, that's in process. Honeybee has made uh, drills uh, and again, uh, batteries. So you can see. 
Uh, the beauty of SBIR is, is that once you develop something like, uh, for example, a, a high-end batteries or wheels, and if it's working, NASA can provide millions of dollars directly to the company without going for another competition, because essentially you already did a competition. You won the SBIR. Now, the other thing is the companies hold on to the IP. So it's not like, oh, we're going to take it away. We have a right to use but you guys can now develop it further. You can do uh, sell it. And so there's a lot of uh, uh, opportunities. And also it's kind of a nice uh, little thing to say, oh yeah, NASA uses our stuff. So uh, there are many alternatives. Next slide, please. Okay, and questions and like uh, they said, we'll do it uh, at the end or whatever. And again, please go in uh, into sbir.nasa.gov to see the latest. And uh, uh, the other thing I was going to say, we have uh, a national SBIR week. It's called the Road Tour. And unfortunately, I don't have it on the slide uh, where it is. But you can just uh, Google um, SBIR Road Tour. And uh, th these are one-on-ones with uh, companies, everything from DOD, NASA, and so on. And also, you can take a look at it. And I'll quiet down now. And uh, let me now uh, introduce uh, NASA Small Business, Christine Monroe, who I worked with a lot of times. And now uh, she's the person to go to when you have any small business concerns, questions, or help. She's a wonderful asset. Christine. Thank you, Rich. My, as he stated, my name is Christine Monroe, and I'm the Small Business Specialist at Ames and Armstrong Research Centers. Next slide. One of my roles is to assist large and small businesses in understanding how to do federal contracting with the government at Ames and Armstrong. I also am the person who monitors and manages the small business program at both of the centers. I am FACC level three certified and I have over 20 years of contracting. Next slide. So today I'm gonna to give you a brief overview of how to do business with NASA, where to find the opportunities, talk to you a little bit about our goals and give you some office resources for the Small Business Programs Office. Next slide. So on our website, we have updated our page. We have provided you how to do business with NASA in six steps. So the first step would be to connect with our office and as you can see, we are on very various social media websites, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we also have a NASA vendor database, and we are one of the few agencies that have a mobile app for their small business program. The second thing you would do is locate a small business specialist at each of the 10 centers that Karen had mentioned earlier. We are... Um, and on that page, you will also see our primary NACE code information and also some information about the centers. Next slide. Step four would be identifying opportunities. So Rich mentioned to you about the SBIR program. There's also another website, Inspires, which also I'm going to provide you a little bit more information later and also the contracting opportunities that you would find in our acquisition forecast. The other thing you can do is attend outreach events that the Office of Small Business Programs participates in, similar to the one that we're doing now. And lastly, do your homework. Government contracting can be complex. And when this is the first time that you're doing this, it's a little bit daunting. And there are several resources that are free that can assist you. I work very closely with a couple of the PTACs in our area, NorCal PTAC, Monterey PTAC, and Capital Corridor PTAC. Next slide. The other thing I wanted to remind you of is the four Ps. People do business with people. Be patient that this is going to be a long-term relationship. Be persistent, but don't be a stalker. Also, performance. Make sure that you're exceeding your customer's expectation. Next slide. This is a picture of all of the NASA small business specialists across the country. And this is also on our website. And we also have an office at JPL. 
where they do contracting differently. You won't find their opportunities on the um, SAM.gov. You would need to go directly to their website. When you click on this link, you'll be able to see what office is there are and also find out what upcoming um, requirements that we do and where to where the business, the NACE code information is and what each center buys. Next slide. As Karen mentioned earlier, we have research centers, space centers, and we also have science centers, um, the F FRDC, which is JPL. And then we also have our um, shared service center. And these are the small business specialist names and their email and phone numbers. Next slide. Where to find the opportunities? Now that I've given you all that information about how to look at NASA, I wanted to share with you the opportunities. Next slide. So you can check on SAM.gov. We have our federal contracting opportunities listed there. The NASA acquisition forecast. Remember that we're in fiscal year 2021, soon to be in fiscal year 2022. So you're always going to look at those requirements that are coming up future. You don't want to look at anything that was in FY 2020 or 19 because those should have been awarded. I mentioned earlier about the INSPIRES website. That's where we post a lot of our science and technology information. And then Rich gave you information about the SBIR, STTR program. Lastly, the mobile app. That is available on iOS and Android. And you can also go to our website and see what upcoming opportunities we have there. Next slide. Also, the NASA Shared Service Center they do most of the requirements for NASA that are below 250K that are within scope. They also do the grants, SBIR, STTR, agency contracts, and they also manage our enterprise license management team. So when you're looking on the acquisition forecast or if you're looking at SAM.gov, you would always see NASA Shared Service Center and they'll let you know specifically which center they are doing that requirement for. Next slide. NASA has decided that we are going to have our own IT procurement office. So they're the ones who are going to be reviewing all of our upcoming IT requirements. And that would be our end-to-end -end user services, cybersecurity communications, and all of our other IT needs. And I participation, um, I'm also supplying you with their new website so that you can get more information. They have not posted their um, requirements on the acquisition forecast, but it is coming soon. Next slide. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our Office of Small Business Office Resources. Next slide. So each month on the third Wednesday of the month, NASA does a learning series. Um, for the OSBP office, the next one we have is scheduled tomorrow, how to do business with the Marshall Space Flight Center with Mr. David Brock. And here are two others that we're doing in August and September. Next slide. Each of the small business specialists participates in outreach events. As you can see, this week for me has been very busy. Um, there's been a couple of outreach events and the next one after this week that I will be doing virtually is the Department of Navy Gold Coast. They are doing matchmaking there. I always tell small businesses um, that one, a lot of companies and a lot of federal agencies attend. So if you can, I would sign up for that one and that's in September. Next slide. I mentioned earlier the NASA OSBP mobile app. One of the neat things about this mobile app is you can click on it and you can get all of these different features. You can contact the small business specialist. You can contact our technical advisors. You can also see what our prime contract metrics are so you can see how we're doing on our goaling. And you can also take a quiz. No one sees your answers but you. So if you don't get the correct answer, you don't have to worry about anybody else seeing it. And it's available on um, the Apple and the Android platforms. Next slide. This is what it looks like, as I mentioned earlier, to give you an overview. Next slide. This is the active contract listing. This page is very important. You can see what our upcoming requirements are. And this is on the mobile app and as well as the website. 
Next slide. So connect with the OSBP office. As I mentioned, you can meet with us via website, attend seminar seminars, attend our outreach events, the mobile app, and also reach out to us on social media. Next slide. But don't forget to make the connection with NASA through our NASA vendor database, check out our outreach events, and I'm also including information about the contractors I have at Ames and Armstrong so that you can see what our current contractors are working on. And don't forget to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me. Next slide. This is my contact information. Next slide. And I'd like to introduce you to Jose. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Jose Benavides, project manager for the Astro B facility out of NASA Ames Research Center. And uh, we're running short on time, so I'm not going to waste any of it. I'm going to show a quick three minute video um, and then stick around for questions. Flying more than 250 miles above Earth, the International Space Station is both a research lab and a stepping stone for future trips to the moon and Mars. the space station alongside astronauts, opening research opportunities for guest scientists and saving astronaut time by doing the tasks. The astrobees will replace the spheres, the current robots, and most used ISS payload. Fully autonomous, each one-foot cube is packed with sensors that open up new areas of research. The astrobees provide a zero-g research facility for guest scientists give ground controllers additional eyes on the spacecraft, monitor radiation and air quality that help keep astronauts safe and can even find lost items. The built-in arm normally occupies the top bay, but can also be swapped for a guest scientist's own experimental hardware. Like a quadcopter, astrobees fly in air, except there is no gravity on the ISS. As a result, they are not limited by lifting power. Larger payloads can attach in a tractor trailer configuration, and multiple astrobees can even work together. Two centrifugal impeller drive air through 12 adjustable nozzles that work together, allowing the robot to instantly move in any direction and turn on any axis. The astrobees will continue the sphere's tradition of hosting the annual Zero Robotics competition drawing together thousands of students from 18 countries who can watch their code fly on the space station. Launching in 2018, Astrobee is the next generation robot meant to make life in space easier for astronauts and at the same time, build a foundation for new scientific breakthroughs in autonomy and robotics. Okay, um, I, I will refer you to uh, nasa.gov slash astrobee is our main website. And uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to take them. Um, or if we have extra time, uh, Saba, let me know. I'd be happy to present more details on astrobee, a really cool robotic uh, technology we're running on the International Space Station. Thank you, Jose and team. Looks like um, this, we're, we are running a little over, so I'd like to open it up for questions and answers. Um, so we have a question here that says, have any Mountain View companies applied for and been granted uh, funding via this program? Um, Rich or Christine, would you like to take this? Sure. Uh, if it, you mean by the SBIR, uh, uh, program, yes, they have, uh, they have been companies. Now, uh, the point is any company in the United States can apply for it as long as it's a U.S. company run either by citizen or a uh, permanent resident. Uh, I don't have a list on my hand which ones uh, are, are have applied, but it's open to everyone. Thank you, Rich. And then our second question is, after an award, do NASA engineers help the companies with the ideas? Okay, which fits SBIR? Uh, SBIR. Okay, SBIR. 
The way it works is within an SBIR program, you have a NASA person, civil servant called the core, which is the contracting officer representative, and they work with the company. And now what happens is once they develop something, you know, obviously there is some exchange uh, of things, but again, it's a contract the company has. If you go to a phase three, then there's much more interaction down the line. But the idea is you got a contract, you propose something, you need to develop it. And again, there's some give and take. Excellent. Thank you, Rich. Um, Jose, can you uh, talk a little bit about the Aster We program and how um, companies and um, academia engage, work with the Aster B team? Uh, actually, the uh, SBIR program is a wonderful example of one way NASA does fund research that ultimately gets demonstrated on the Aster B platform. And so Astro was very much designed from the very beginning to be a facility uh, that can serve users all around the country and all around the world, actually. And so it is a platform uh, that caters to users from all over the place. And uh, many of them come up through the SBIR program. Um, okay. Some of them come through uh, the National Lab, uh, formerly CASES, uh, is a, a nonprofit organization set up uh, by the federal government uh, to support commercial utilization of, of the space station. And so between those two uh, pipelines, those are our big source of uh, users for, for Astrobe. And so if anyone's interested, uh, those are the great, uh, great ways to get started and uh, actually use Astrobe on the space station. Excellent. Thank you. So with that, I would like to um, thank you all for attending. And um, we do have a virtual booth where links are posted to each one of our areas. And again, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.